So today I'm going to answer 10 commonly asked questions. Number one, where do you get your stuff? Well, look for sales, but also ask old ladies. A lot of them are tired of canning and they will give it to you for free or cheap. Number two, should I store it with a lid on or off? Go ahead and take it off. That way you can see if it's sealed properly and wipe it all off so it's not sticky. Number three, my canning jar broke when I was canning. Why? Well, you could have used a knife to get the air out, which you shouldn't have done and chipped your jar. You could have hit it on the bottom and break, broken it that way. There's a couple of different reasons. Sometimes when it's old, the jars will wear out too. Number four, how long will canned things last? They will last a long, long time. Remember, they're not commercially canned, but the texture will deteriorate over time. So, depends on how you like your texture. Spaghetti sauce might not matter so much, but green beans might matter a lot. Five, can you can butter? No, no dairy products. Six, can you can meat? Absolutely, but use a pressure canner and a recipe. Number seven, I found a pressure canner at a garage sale. Can I use it? I would get it checked out. A lot of extension offices will check it out for you to make it safe, and you should get them tested yearly, whether they're new or old. <laughs> Number eight, etiquette. Do I need to return jars? Yes, you do. That way you'll get them back filled with goodies next year. Number nine, what's the advantage of canning over freezing? Less freezer space. No, uh, if the power goes out, you won't have a problem and there'll be no frostbite. Is that what it's called? Frostbite? Fridge burn. Frostbite. Mind blank. <laughs> there'll be no frost in your food. Number 10. Should I eat canned goods from a stranger? I would want to know what recipes they use because there's grandma's recipes that are really old and they're no longer approved and they're for when food was different. Soil is different now. Vegetables are different now because of the heirloom versus non-heirloom. So recipes have evolved a little bit. And so you want to make sure you use new and approved recipes. So it depends on where that person was using it. I would be not so reluctant to eat fruit. You can usually see what's going on. But meat and seafood, vegetables, uh, from a stranger, probably not. Don't take canned goods from a stranger. So as informative as that was, I'm afraid it's a little bit short for content people like to see longer videos. So I'm gonna help you out here. We have a Manly Manners. This is the first time ever you and I have done a Manly Manners together. The last one I didn't air because you disagreed with me. <laughs> was, <laughs> actually, that, was I right? No, actually, actually I, I, I formatted the card and I, I lost everything. So if you're just joining us, this is a book that we've used for years called, uh, I call it Manly Manners. It's actually Don'ts for Husbands. It was published in 1913. And I recently found out by a woman, which has completely blown my mind because I was always thought of it from a man's perspective. But it is a very non-politically correct advice to young husbands and old husbands alike on how to have a happy wife, happy life. Uh, so, so what I'm gonna, going to do is we're going to do this together. We'll get your perspective as well. I'll, tr I'll tr try not to mansplain to you. I'll try not to mansplain. Uh, and I'm just going to randomly pick. You randomly pick. You read it, and then we'll, uh, we'll give our takes on it and see. You, you read it. You want me to read it? Yeah, I want you to read it. Okay, Manly Manners, for those of you who are following along, page 50, don't be nervous about your wife. She can take care of herself much better than you imagine, and she hates you to be fussy. Oh man, that, does that not start, start, strike close to home? Uh, I'm going to go on. Don't settle down into an old married man while you are still in the prime of life. Take your wife out and about, give parties, visit your friends, and you will keep much younger than if you settle into the smoking jacket and slippers habit. Now this is funny because Cody has recently been saying, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a place where the men met and could have a cigar together and just hang out? I, you know, I am a big fan of, um, I'm a big Anglophile, and I read Victorian Dickens and all that, and it, it's really romantic, the idea of these gentlemen going to the club and having their fine scotch and their cigar cigars and, and having a bit of, you know, having a bit of time together. Um, I think we should bring that back. It's, yeah. it's the men's book club. I, I don't <laughs> think they had a book club. I was thinking of something a little more masculine, you know, maybe some fencing, darts. Okay. Anyway. So, um, so, so don't be nervous about me. Okay. So don't be nervous about your wife. She can take care of us. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, it, you know what? Uh, sometimes maybe this can be a conflict because, um, 
men and women are different. That's a big surprise to a lot of people. Um, I, I have a desire to, to look after you. I know. And, um, but I, I guess what, what that's saying to me is to not to, not, don't look after you too much. Well, for me, sometimes it's like, oh, I think I'm going to go hiking. Oh, oh, you should go with me. I don't want you to go alone. Even okay. though before we got married, I did all that kind of stuff alone. Okay. So, uh, what, what is that? How does this come into play when it's, it's a, it's a, let's say it's 33 degrees outside pouring down rain and we have a flat tire. Do you want to, to do you want me to be, uh, make sure that to remind you, Hey, don't forget manly matter says that you can take care. A woman can take care of herself. Absolutely. So there's a double standard. Oh no, I would call you. <laughs> so what i'm hearing here is is you want me to make sure that you i want you to make sure you have your phone on in case i need you okay so <laughs> when do i know when you want to take care of yourself and when you want me to take care of you because i don't want to step on any toes <laughs> i always want you to take care of me just like i take care of you maybe it would be a good idea for men and women when they enter into a marriage to have a contract like ours we have a contract uh, that stated, if ever there is a, uh, what do they call it, a, a phone tree? Yeah, a phone tree where you have to press buttons. This falls under her personal area of responsibility. No, no, no. It's his personal area. I hate them. So it's your personal area of responsibility. We should so, go back and look at the contract, but I, I distinctly remember it being your personal area of responsibility. <laughs> I think it's fallen onto me. So what are my personal areas of responsibility? I haven't looked at the contract for a long time. I think... It was a verbal contract. Laundry. I haven't, I haven't upheld my end of the contract. <laughs> I put my laundry on the floor. <laughs> okay, so, but, but back to this. Is no, so, so I, I, I think what it's saying is take good care of her, but don't be too fussy. Give her a little bit of, uh, of latitude. Yeah. A, a little bit of respect. Yeah. But, but change just like, her flat tire in the rain. Yeah, sometimes you like to get coffee in bed. Sometimes I like to get coffee in bed. Take care of each other. Yeah, take care of it. And don't keep track. Right. Don't because keep... sometimes I'll give more, sometimes you'll give more. Yeah. And this I mean, is how it goes. Coffee, for example. And one, one of the reasons, one thing that I really admire about you is you're so good in this is you don't keep track. Because I know, I mean, I can admit here publicly, you give, probably give more, probably, you give more in many ways with, you know, making coffee and just doing little favors and, and looking after me than, than I do in those ways. And so... I don't want you, I want you to know that I, I appreciate that. So thank you. Um, was there anything else you take from Manly Manners? No, I, I, I guess I thought it was going to be more. Well, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I still am not real clear on take, which. Take your wife out and about, give parties, visit your friends. What do you think of that? I wanted to get to the slippers and the smoking jacket. <laughs> Says the introvert. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that sounds, that's starting to sound really good to me, the slippers and the smoking jacket. The older I get, the less I like to go out, the more, I'm, I'm getting curmudgeonly a little bit. <laughs> I could, I could, the pipe and the smoking jacket, I could see that. It's totally, totally. All right, so. I, I guess we're going to throw a party. All right, well, anything you want. I'll <laughs> throw parties and change tires in the rain. That's what I got from Manly Madison. That was very helpful for me. <laughs> very, very helpful. All right. Well, uh, you never know what you're going to get on the Wrangler Star channel. Uh, canning and common sense. How's that? CCS. Is that spelled with it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.